Hi everyone, welcome to my new YouTube channel dedicated to translational biology, which is a wide field where we attempt to use basic research knowledge and convert that knowledge into products, into therapeutic, in fact, molecules, into services, and in general to solution to our societies. So every time I will focus on a topic I will select from biological sciences, mainly from those disciplines where science is progressing very fast and produce new knowledge, making new concepts like molecular genetics, genomics, evolutionary biology, biotechnology, and other disciplines. And I will emphasize the translational values of the topic during the, uh, the presentation. So as a first topic to launch this channel, I have selected the anatopology, a topic that is not well covered in most curricula at universities, and it might be stressful for many biology learners. So to start with, I would say I will focus on the geometrical properties of the DNA molecule and how these properties affect the DNA metabolism, the processes of replication, transcription and combination. So as you know, a DNA molecule is compatible to a double-stranded probe, like the one I have in hands. So where you can have here a number of terms. So this helical structure in this molecule, you can determine the number of terms by dividing the number of nucleotides or bases by the helical, in fact, length. And then you can tell how many terms you have in the molecule. Now, if you look at this molecule, I would say this is a relaxed molecule. It carries no strain, so you can tell and predict the number of turns depending on the DNA form you have. But if you fix one end of this molecule, look very well, and then you unwind the molecule by removing turns, let's say, or you do the opposite. You twist further to add turns. In both cases, the molecule will coil on itself to generate what we specify as super coils. So again, if you fix one end, and then from the other end, you unwind DNA, as I'm doing here now, or you twist further to add turns, in both cases, you will see that the molecule will coil on itself to generate a compact structure that we call supercoiled molecule. Naturally, the consequence of adding or removing turn is not the same. Because when you remove turn, you are generating supercoils, we call negative. When you add turns, these supercoils will be positive. The concept of supercoiling will not apply to a linear DNA molecule. Because as you can see, if you twist further or you remove turns, I mean you twist loser, in both cases, the strain you have generated will be immediately dissipated from the ends, which are free to rotate. So the molecule is always relaxed. However, if you unwind DNA by removing some turns, or you twist further to add turns, and then you connect the ends, you'll see quickly that the molecule will twist in the opposite direction to generate a compact structure that we call supercoiled molecule or superhelix. I have done this with both, in fact, alternative possibilities, like adding or removing turns, I have generated these two molecules that you can see in my hands. If you look closer, you can tell which one carries positive and which one carries negative supercoils. Naturally, they are not equivalent. They do have geometrically. The one that is negatively supercoiled, and you can see in my hand, is the one that is energetically favorable for the DNA metabolism for, for instance, the process of replication, where the two strands are expected to separate, to melt, to initiate the process. So these two molecules, in fact, although they are identical in terms of DNA sequence, they have the same number of turns, they carry different types of supercoils. One of them is positively supercoiled, and the other one is negatively supercoiled. We refer to these two molecules as two different topoisomers. 
Let's make it specific. Let me show you how we measure, in fact, the topological properties of a DNA molecule, starting with the different forms of DNA. What are the different forms that you know very well? I'm quite sure. Starting from the beginning. So here, my name and Professor Fahad Nasser from the uh, Lebanese University in Beirut. And here you can see one of my private website that you can visit if you wish. So we return to our topic. And starting with the different forms of DNA, as I told you, DNA can adopt different forms that we call A, B and Z, depending on a number of conditions, like for instance, the level of hydration, the chemical composition, modifications of bases, as well as the type and concentration of the metal ion in solution, DNA sequence, and supercoiling. So we have many features that determine which form is adopted in solution. So we have here different forms. Let me tell you from the beginning for those who are not familiar with the issue, A and B are both right-handed DNA molecule. They turn to the right, I mean clockwise, while Z is a left-handed DNA molecule. So all of them are simply variations of the basic uh, team, which is the double helix. So they are regular. In fact, they have regular structure, uh, linear form. So in this case, I would say the topology of these molecules when they are linear can be predicted quickly, depending on the features they have. However, many molecules can adopt structure of high complexity when they are closed, like this one you have seen previously. So when, you, in fact, you take a DNA molecule, a linear one, and you close, so you will generate a circular DNA molecule that is relaxed. And this is equally a different topoisomere compared to the other supercoiled one. So closed DNA molecules exist everywhere, like plasmids, bacterial, in fact, and organelles, mitochondria, chloroplast, chromosomes, are all defined as closed molecule and we refer to as double stranded covalently closed circular DNA molecule. Very simple. If you consider a DNA molecule in the B DNA form, so it's very simple to make it uh, quick. In the B DNA form, you have 10 base per per turn. So all you have to do to determine the number of turns is to divide the number of nucleotides by the pitch, which is the helical turn. So 800 divided by 10, you get 80. So by convention, right-handed molecules are designated positive, while the Z form, which is left-handed, is designated negative. So we have here T, which is the number of turns, is equal 800 divided by 10, so plus 80. That molecule, the linear one, is said to be relaxed, not supercoiled. Again, there is no possibility to apply supercoiling to a linear DNA molecule, since the ends are free to rotate. Now, this might be misleading for those who might ask the question, are all eukaryotic chromosomes, which are linear DNA molecules, relaxed? And the answer is not. All of them are supercoiled, because the, the component of the eukaryotic chromosome make the end unavailable, in fact, to rotate freely when we have a strain applied to those chromosomes. So let's return to our main topic and consider the concept of supercoiling. So as I mentioned previously, we refer to this term as the presence of additional or fewer turns in a DNA molecule. So when you have additional turns, we refer as positive supercoils. When you remove turns, we call them negative supercoils. It's good to compare sometimes the DNA double helix, the axis, to the uh, phone cord that is coiled. And as you know, the uh, the coiled coil cord can coil on itself to generate what we call supercoil. Here, down to the uh, to the right, you can see what we have done previously with the simulation. The DNA molecule fixed on one end, and on the other end, you can see very well the uh, the uh, gentleman is just um, opening or unwinding DNA, and you can see you are generating a strain ahead of the fork. 
what we call supercoiling. Naturally, once you release, in fact, the strain, the supercoiling will be removed from either side, unless you connect the ends and then you generate a circular DNA molecule. At that time, you have a topoisomer having specific geometrical property. Here I am showing you again the illustration of the supercoiling. On the top, you have a linear DNA molecule with 20 turns. Let's assume this is the B DNA form. So by connecting the ends, you generate a circular DNA molecule having 20 turns. This molecule is relaxed by definition. Down, what you have done is that you have unwound, you have removed two turns, as you can see very well, by unwinding or by twisting loser, as you wish. And then you have connected the ends. You have generated again a circular DNA molecule, but instead of 20 turns, you have now 18 turns. And you can see very well the unwound region left behind, or what we call the bubble. Naturally, to regain, in fact, uh, the stacking properties of DNA to restore hydrogen bonding, this DNA molecule that you can see here in the middle on D will twist in the opposite orientation, as I mentioned previously, to generate what we call a superhelix, where we restore the hydrogen bond bonding, in fact, between the two here uh, separated strands. And in this molecule, you can count 20 helical turns exactly as for the relaxed DNA molecule, but you have two additional super helical terms. And by the way, here you have two negative super coils. The molecule is in fact now compact. Now I'll show you an electron micrograph, a very beautiful one showing DNA as relaxed and super coiled. This is the same DNA molecule, by the way, on this electron micrograph. To the left, you have the supercoiled, which is densely packed, compact structure, and the right one that is relaxed. So getting into parameters, here you have another micrograph, and to the left, you have the only relaxed molecule, and then you have increasing supercoiling from left to right. So the degree of supercoiling is increasing from this molecule to the left to the right. Very well. So getting into parameters, the main parameter, in fact, to define supercoiling is the linking number. We call equally topological winding number, and we designate by L, LK, or alpha. And the linking number is the property of each circular DNA molecule. It's equated to the twist, I mean the number of turns plus ride, which is the number of supercoils. In the relaxed DNA molecule, what is I mean, the, the, the one that was linear and we uh, connected, in fact, we, we have connected the ends and generated the circular DNA molecule, that molecule is relaxed, and L, or the linking number, is equal to 80. We have simply 800 base pairs divided by 10. You get plus 80 turns. And since there is no strain, no supercoiling here in this molecule, so the ride is equal to zero, and the linking number of this molecule is equal to 80. Now, assuming that you have removed two turns and then you have connected the ends again, you would have a new DNA molecule, I mean a new topoisomer, having a linking number of 80 minus 2, so it's going to be 78. So every time, in fact, you cut one or both strands of a circular DNA molecule, you add and you remove turns, and then you reconnect the, uh, the ends, you have a new topoisomer having a specific linking number, and that linking number is going to be constant as long as the two strands are covalently Close. So, so this is the topological value of a circular DNA molecule being constant unless you cut one or both strands and then you change the number of turns. I mean, you add or you remove turns. So this molecule, as I mentioned, would have a specific linking number that is constant and can only be changed when one strand or both strands are cut. And those molecules that are able to convert one topoisomer into another, I mean, to change the topological winding number, the linking number, are called DNA topoisomerases. Those enzymes are known to remove 
the stress from the animal molecule, which is in fact an essential function during DNA metabolism, for instance, during DNA replication, where the melting of the DNA, the separation of strands will generate a strain ahead of the moving fork, so adding turns and those turns must be removed to enable the fork to proceed further. We have two different classes of topoisomerase. We have a class one and class two. So in a class one or type one, we have a break in one strand. So then we're gonna change the linking number by increments of one after each round. While type two topoisomerase, in fact, they cut both strands. So after one round of reaction, you're going to change the linking number by an increment of two. In E. coli, for instance, which is a modal system used in most laboratories, we have four different topoisomerases. Two of them are of type one, I mean topoisomerases one and three, and two of them are of type two. I'm referring here to topoisomerases two and four. The topoisomerase, in fact, two is well known as DNA gyrase, which is instrumental in DNA uh, replication being required the process for the process to uh, proceed. And on this slide, I'm showing you the action of topoisomerases. So you have here uh, DNA molecules that are relaxed or supercoiled. All the molecules you can see here are identical. However, they have different degrees of supercoiling, different superhelical density. On lane one, you can see a plasmidic preparation that is loaded on an agarose gel, and you can see very well two bands. The upper one corresponds to the relaxed DNA molecule, while the lower one is the supercoiled. Naturally, you can predict that in this large, very intense band, you might have more than one topoisomeres, uh, I mean, uh, more than one uh, supercoiled uh, molecule. However, all of them are highly supercoiled. Now, when you apply, for instance, a topoisomerase, and in this exercise, we have applied topoisomerase type one. In lane two and three, they are identical, but on lane three, the incubation went longer. So you can see very well the appearance of new bands. Each of them corresponds to one specific topo isomer. So while we are relaxing this highly supercoiled DNA, new bands appear, each corresponding to one topo isomer having specific linking number. So you can see on lane three, where we have incubated the, in fact, uh, DNA preparation with type one topo isomerase longer, the relaxed DNA molecule are getting, in fact, more intense. And if you keep going, I mean, if you incubate longer, the uh, uh, lower band corresponding to the highly supercoil will disappear, and the highly, in fact, uh, relaxed DNA molecule will become more intense until we form just one band corresponding to the completely relaxed DNA molecule. So this is the type 1 topoisomerase in action. It's a beautiful exercise showing the appearance of different topoisomeres by the action of type 1 topoisomerase. So with this, we have come to the end of the, fir of the first short video dedicated to DNA topology. I might add that one of the translational value of this, in fact, topic is the fact that topoisomerases are essential function for the cell, mainly for this for the cycling cell, for cells that are dividing. So inhibitory molecules of specific topoisomerases would serve, in fact, as anti-cancer drugs as well as antibiotics. And we will highlight, in fact, this uh, aspect of the uh, uh, basic research in future videos. So if you would like to see more videos like this one, subscribe to my channel, please. And if you have any comment or you have any question, please leave a note uh, below this uh, video. And if you have any suggestion, any proposal for a collaboration or to provide a course online or a series of lectures or to prepare a webin webinar for, for uh, 
a group of students, so please use my uh, professional uh, email and write me directly. I will get back to all of you. Thank you for your attention and see you next time. Goodbye.